Iron workers in training at the local 86 office in Tukwila are banking on continued economic growth and development in Washington state. But the union's business manager, Chris McLean, worries a new state carbon fee could slow industrial investment. We're concerned that less developers will move into the area and that means less future jobs will be available for our members. More immediately, McLean worries that the measure to put a starting fee of $15 per ton on carbon emissions would be passed on to the consumer, ultimately his members. This is ultimately going to wind up being largely a gas tax or a heating bill tax to working class families. So most of our members drive between 30 and 60 miles a day uh, to work and this will hit them directly. Different groups disagree over the potential cost impact. The Yes to 1631 campaign estimates it could cost the average household $120 to $180 per year. Critics estimate it's roughly double that. If passed, the new fee would be directly paid by oil companies, utilities and other emitters. Around 70% of the revenue raised, an estimated $2.3 billion in the first five fiscal years, would be spent investing in building up a clean energy infrastructure. To really accelerate the pace of change, we need a lot more funding so we can fund more projects, try out these ideas, and see what really works well. Grant Williamson, who used to work in wastewater treatment, is now a PhD student at UW studying green energy, specifically batteries. He believes I-1631 is needed to scale up the technology that's now being researched and developed. This transition to me, the way I see it, it's going to happen, it's happening already. And we can either be leaders in the transition or we can see what happens and be followers. While I-1631 contains a framework for how the new money will be spent, an exact plan must still be created and a new board of stakeholders appointed. The flexibility of the initiative and the funding we're making with it actually, to me personally, seems like a huge advantage in that we're going to be able to make sure the technologies that are doing the most are the ones that fund it, are funded. But back over at Local 86, Chris McLean worries his members could be left out. We certainly weren't part of the conversation in drafting the legislation, so it's easy for us to believe that we won't be part of uh, that conversation when it comes down to determining where funds go and what projects will be, uh, will be built. And this is a measure that has labor unions divided. As you saw, the iron workers and a number of the construction and building trade groups are opposed. Meanwhile, health care workers and a public employees union in favor. Now, this initiative has a lot of information and details to sort through. We have much more background on the measure, details about the next steps of forming the plan if it passes online. We also have background on the funding of both campaigns, fact checks of ads, and then an in-depth debate on this initiative on our website. Go to king5.com slash inside politics. You'll find it there.